Hey guys, so this week on Titan Tries, we're going to be taking a look at another game that I've wanted to play for a very long time. This is Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. And we're going to be taking a look at the original Xbox version because the PC version is, uh, even on release, a bit of a broken mess. So I'm hoping the original Xbox version is going to be better. Now, this game is for sale on Steam, although the Steam version apparently needs quite a lot of work and including... Uh, the use of a fan patch, which, well, even with, it may work, it may not, <laughs> depending on how lucky you are. Uh, and there's also a GOG version for sale, which, again, it's got all the fan patches uh, installed, but it's... Again, just a mess. So we're going to be looking at the original Xbox version just because, with fingers crossed, you know, it's going to work. So <laughs> we shall see. So what is Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth? Well, I wasn't sure, uh, apart from the fact that I know it's some sort of first-person horror game. So Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, is a first-person horror game that combines intense action and adventure elements this game, you'll draw your skills in exploration, investigation, combat, while facing the seemingly impossible task of battling evil incarnates. The game features diverse array of levels, from quaint towns to alien locations, including Deep One City. Mm. Dynamic san sanity system, resulting in hallucinations, panic attacks, vertigo, paranoia, and more. Incredibly detailed real-time graphics with atmospheric lighting and dynamic shadows. Intelligent gameplay involving puzzle solving as well as combat and exploration. And 1920s weaponry and vehicles along with evil artifacts and alien technology. If you're up for a spine-tingling adventure, consider diving into the eerie world of Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Now, I've never really got into the uh, Cthulhu lore or any of that kind of stuff, but it is something that's kind of somewhat at least been on my radar. So, let's have a little look at this game, shall we? Loading may take a few minutes. Please be patient. This will not happen every time you run Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Okay. Interesting. The mysterious poverty-stricken town of Innsmouth lies a decaying shipwreck on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. To the casual observer, it appears that nothing more than a derelict coastal town plagued by recession. Ha. Huh. Closer inspection reveals something much more sinister casting a dark shadow over its narrow, shabby streets and cracked, cobbled something. Most of the crumbling buildings that make up Innsmouth... Oh, oh, here we go. Right, so what options have we got here? We have some... We'll knock the brightness up a couple of settings. I guess. Sure. Oh, one setting, I suppose. Uh, game options, we'll have subtitles on, which is pretty nice to see that in an original Xbox game. Special features, well, we've got cinematics that are all locked, apparently. We saw defaults and controller options. Eh, we'll be fine, I'm pretty sure. Let's go new game. We have Boy Scout Difficulty and Private Investigator, Hardened Detective and Mythos Specialist, but the top two difficulties are greyed out. So, let's go Private Investigator. Dreams of the Future. Was it a dream? I cannot say. Well, neither can I, because the tooltip uh, loaded too quickly. all meaningless I now walk in the shadows between worlds and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth
Well, this looks like a fun, happy place. an intro okay the ignorant and the deluded are I think in a strange way to be envied that which is not known does not trouble us It'd be nice if we actually had time to read the tooltips gameplay tips are currently active if you don't want to see any gameplay uh, game tips they can be turned off from the game options you can press the start button at any time yep that's cool probably gonna want tips six and a half years ago okay Sixth of September, nineteen fifteen, Massachusetts. Robert, this had better be good. What's the beat? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any Victor. He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the local scare. So tonight, we were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds. When we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out here? Eh, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I better check out this crazy gang. And here we are, we're just playing it. So visually, so far, and uh, including the animations, the game is very strong. You know... Kind of amazing that this is an original three six, uh, an original Xbox game. Yeah, the chief. What a wonderful night for a storm. Lovely. Something must be wrong. What are you talking about? Here I am. Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Ah. I see. I'm liking... Oh. Well, that didn't go very well. Okay, where's Victor? Jesus. Are we armed? We must at least have some kind of weaponry, surely. Bloody hell. I guess we have... Alright, so we've got syringe. We've got um, a watch. And that's it. Alright. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. I don't know if we're like freaky out or something. And it looks like we don't have any kind of weapon either. Which is a little bit... Poopy. Right, so. Damn, Phillips is dead. That's no good. Well, let's see what they've been cooking up out here. Not much by the look of things. Game is very dark. Ah, a dining room. 
Oh, well, they've certainly been studying something whilst eating other people's trash. Ooh. Mr. Cthulhu, is that you? Hmm. So the movement is kind of weird. That's curious. So the black button takes it into the inventory. The white button doesn't do anything. Two triggers aren't doing anything. D-pad's not doing anything. So if we click the stick in, that does something. So there's no prompts. truly are gods to us. Their intellect and knowledge surpasses ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I know now just how insignificant mankind is in the universe, a doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the elder humans. Uh -oh. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. You have picked up your first journal item. Select the book icon in the interface to study the journal. It may reveal vital clues when the book icon is grayed out. There are no new entries to read. Okay, so let's actually take a little look at controller options. So, okay, so mode is cycled when we push in the uh, right analog stick for reasons okay so apparently the white button is quick heal all right this blasphemous image makes me feel uneasy it must have been lit recently but it started to die down the fire is still burning a powerful painting of some cosmic horror this is cool so there isn't actually like any prompts it looks like an eye but the rest of the painting has no real shape it looks like an eye. Okay. So this does make me feel like we're doing some actual proper detective work here. And we've got to look around and just examine things. A depiction of some alien creature. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's an unusual design. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, Jack. Certainly not your standard. Okay. So we've got some kind of cooker here. It's an old stove. It's hot and giving off a lot of smoke. Uh-huh. The stove's still burning. Interesting that there's like several... It's too dark to be sure, but that rotting smell tells me these shelves are used for storing food. So this is our food cellar. This is interesting. Yeah, so multiple um, things. So, well, multiple amounts of information. Mm. Looks almost like a flaming eye. I should take a closer look. I be a lot happier with a gun. Kind of looks like a witch's hat. Oh, so that's a save game. Curious. Okay. Locked. locked. Right. Was that every door here? I guess so. Can't open it. Damn. Looks like I'm stuck. As well check this place out. I guess we may as well. I don't like the fact that we're completely unarmed. Well, that sounds like somebody just got their neck shot out. Too bad for him, I guess. I like that they dumped the place, you know. Looks very fortified. They certainly haven't been keeping up with maintenance, that's for sure. All right, fair enough, Jack. Ooh. You had a bad time, didn't you, brother? You seem to recognize me. I don't get it. Yeah, very strange. His body is covered in tattoos, and they were carved into his flesh with something sharp. The body's still warm, but it's definitely dead. You seem to recognize me. Hmm, very strange. Well, we've got some shotgun cartridges here. And a very flat-looking pillow. 
Wow, there's a lot of shells. Yeah, it looks like these guys were arming up. It's, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. It's it's an old wardrobe, all right. Okay. Keep. Ooh. This guy looks like he uh, took the easy way out. Poisoning by the looks of it. Hmm. He's dead. They're all dead. Oh, we're like wigging out here. Okay. Suicide. Or rather, mass suicide. These nuts had some serious issues. You reckon? I thought it was perfectly normal to carve symbols into one skin. It's an old stove. And, uh, you know, start a shootout with the cops. Rummage through people's trash. Perfectly normal. I guess we can't search any of this stuff. Not a fan of the... The blurry screen. Suicide, or rather. So they just suicide. literally all drank the Kool Aid. Some serious issues. Nothing of interest. All right, I think we need to get out of it. Oh. A diary. This will make interesting reading. Will it? Are you sure? Why can't? There we go. So let's have a look. Nothing collected. Diary of a cult member. August 20th, 1915. We have been watching him now for two months. I can feel my anticipation growing as the day of contact draws near. Victor has not yet divulged his final plan for bringing Mr. Walters to us. All I know is that we must succeed. August 24th. The ceremony today was inspiring. Victor enlightened us with a story of the great race transcending the bounds of time to visit his dreams. Of the conscious things on this earth and in the ocean depths, we are but servants to a greater design. I can only hope that my faith during these last days will win, we, win me favor when our masters step through the gate. August 29th. The experiments below have claimed one of our uh, one more of our order. Another volunteer is needed, but many are willing. We are truly blessed through our faithful service now that his coming grows close. September 3rd. The preparations are complete and Victor's plan is in motion. He will arrive soon. Surely by now he must suspect his true nature. Or at least question the nature of his gifts. He has come. Finally, it begins. Oh, how deliciously ominous. Aye. Let's keep going then. Even in there, lad. Don't shoot. Well, I guess no answers today, huh? That's fine. He's dead. Looks like a bad case of lead poisoning. Ah, our friend Jack here has yeah. he recognized me. some it sounded like he was going to get a sense of humor. On in this joint. Yeah, well, Damn. unfortunately, his brain seemed to be all over the place. He's dead. Looks like right, so we've got a key. You picked up an inventory item. Open the interface to view this item and its description. Highlight the item and press A to use it with a character, an object, or even by itself. So I'm guessing we're going to be getting different characters. How delectable. Right, so one of these rooms was locked. It won't budge. It won't budge. It won't open. And it won't open. One second, guys. Alright, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Mrs. came home. So, um, it won't open. so it doesn't say that the door is locked. Let's have a look. <sighs> if I could remember what the controls were. What button is the inventory? 
Ah, right, yes, it's the black one. So, copperhead key with an S engraved on the head. So, can we go here? The lock on the store is broken. Okay, so that is actually how you use a key. The lock on the store is broken. Right, so... No doors there that we can get through. I. We can go downstairs though. Let's go have a little peek. So, ah, well, I mean, there we go. The key doesn't fit. Oh, <laughs> uh, fair enough. I guess we're not going through there. An old grandfather clock. Mm, it, um, I mean, yeah. It's unlocked. Oh, okay. So you can just walk up to these and just push the A button, and that's good enough. Good to know. Right, where's this guy that was wanting to talk to us? Well, they've been keeping an eye on me, I guess. Lit recently, but it started to die Which down. is certainly not creepy at all. This should put the door across the hall. It should do. I guess we are going to find out. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. Mmm. All of them. <laughs> Every single one. Mistake. Why would they want me here? Uh, it must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. A screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. I've got to think. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe there's something more going on around here. All right. It's unlocked. There's a lot of books around here, but then I suppose... They seem quite literate. Well, at least maybe some of them are. Wasn't a lot to do in 1915, I suppose. It appears to be a private study area. Hmm. It appears to be a private study area. With some kind of information. Ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Uh, do we know how to read classical Greek? Uh, enlightened or duped inside Boston's strangest church. Those of our readers who live near the headquarters in an ordinary looking Boston residence will need no introduction to the Fellowship of Yith, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group here before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country's founding, upon the basis of religious freedoms, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number of uh, are headquartered in the state of New England, where the pilgrims themselves saw new, a new world free of religious prosecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does a religion become a cult and its trusting adherence oh and it's trusting adherence not to mention its blameless neighbors become victims that is the question this journal um, possesses in regard to the fellowship of yith in a month-long investigation our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind the so-called church its origins are somewhat mysterious the more so, uh, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe that he is communing, uh, communing with the mysterious powers behind his faith and that he is to shortly return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group. A little different from many others, however. These who make their homes near the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting menacing glances at their uh, innocuous neighbours and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or readdress. 
Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change colour unpredictably and cast weird, intelligible shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises in which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. They include chanting, unearthly music and, worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of the sex neighbours are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocity, atrocities. Those few who dared to complain to the police were told that because the house is private property and because there is no concrete evidence of any wrongdoings, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yith engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause to the local community? A source within the police department speaking on the condition of anonymity tell the Globe that the fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes. But so far, the lack of evidence and the reluctance of any nervous witness seems to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say. Where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interest of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about this so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months so that all may know the truth. Editors note, it is with great sorrow that the Globes and... Wait, hang on, start that one again. Editors note, it is with great sorrow that the Globes announces the death of a reporter, oh, Howard Adelstone, who was leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of Yig when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbour. The coroner has ruled out his death as a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. Well, so, they got rid of him, I guess. What's that? Panatokia. Okay. This manuscript looks medieval, but claims to be a translation from the classical Greek of a far older work from before time of the first humans. The pages are stained, faded, and even burned in some places, making reading difficult. The legibility sections tell the history of an unthinkably distant antiquity. They speak of races so strange as to be beyond human comprehension, and wars fought across vast gulfs of time and space. There are concepts so utterly alien that they sound like absolute madness, time travel, flying polyps, mental projection, a great race of yith, makes you dizzy just to read it. Okay, so that was a lot. I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of that sort of stuff in this game, but that's okay. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. Yeah, so we can hear. Certainly nothing good. So how, pray tell, do we go through? Hmm. Interesting that we've actually got a... Why can't... Wait. Ooh. Oh. Oh. No, that does not. Still, let's go take a little look down here. How do we go down ladders? I, <laughs> I mean, sure. I guess. Oh, this does not sound good. Oh, jeez. Well, everything that could go well, that's just swell. wrong has gone wrong. So we're not going back. He's dead. The bee must have fallen and crushed his skull. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Anybody down here? Ooh. This place really isn't up to code at all. 
Like, not even... Ooh. Not even close. Well, there was some serious stuff going on down here, wasn't there? Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. Yeah. From the markings, he must have been one of their own. I wonder if he volunteered. It sounds like it. So there has to be someone around here that can shed some light on what's going on. Oh, look at that delightful machine. Oh, hello. You don't look to be having a good time there, sir. Ooh. That certainly looks a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I don't think you're you're going to be getting off that alive. Sorry, friend. Oh. Oops. My bad. Sorry, brother. Didn't mean to kill you like that, but maybe it was a kindness. Is his brain like exp yeah, even his brain is like open and exposed. Yeah, not sure how he was alive, but Hey, what do I know? His brain stopped moving. Oh, that. His brain was in there. The crystal's still warm. Okay. His intestines have stopped moving. So they've taken everything out of him and spread them out into these jars. His kidneys have stopped moving. Wish I'd seen that before I zapped him. Nothing of interest. Are you sure nothing of interest? His heart has stopped. Well, that's unfortunate. His lungs have stopped ventilating. His stomach stopped moving. So basically they've cut all of his organs out and just put them There's no power. All over this room. The machine must have overloaded. He's dead. Yeah, well, I'm, pff, he's probably glad to be dead. I'm going to be honest with you. I think most of us would be. This tunnel feels like it's going to collapse at any moment. Yeah, it doesn't feel great, I'll be honest. Ah, so it looks like we needed the crystal anyway. Ah, it's too hot to pick up. I guess we can't touch that one. Well, well, well. There's no power. Okay, so we do have one crystal in our back pocket. I do wish we had like a torch or something. What the hell is that? I don't know, my friend, but I'm curious to find out. It's a similar shape to the slot upstairs. Well, we just so happen to have a strange green crystal. It's warm and exhibits an unusual glow. Stick that in there, push the button again. And what will we find? Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. monstrous demons from beyond the moon. Mysterious phone call. Just as the body can, given time and rest, heal itself from injury. Oh. So, and that was six years ago. It's been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. 
probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. Huh. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult, delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. Ah. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told in the years. Jack Walters. Hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. D did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Vernon. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this... What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. Interesting. So, February 6th, 1922. Night. I have a new client, Mr. Arthur Anderton. In the region... Uh, the regional manager of the first national grocery store chain. It appears that the first national grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized and its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I've been able to gather, Burnham is... Oh. Yeah, Burnham is something of a young rogue. A friend of the family. Mr. Anderson gave him the job as a favor. Okay. Well, either the game's... Oh, no, it's just the controller's gone to sleep. <laughs> okay, so Burnham is looking like a, the prime suspect for the robbery, but there's a few things that don't add up. Not to Anderson, and not to me. For instance, why would Burnham force entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and the combination to the back office safe to misdirect any investigation if that was the plan why did he disappear following my conversation with mr anderson i found out what i could about the ancient town of innsmouth 
For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighbouring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of strange elements in the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, so the stories go. Whatever that's supposed to mean. The usual hick town prejudice, no doubt. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Burnham robbed the place and wanted to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. Feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case for so long. Okay. A visit to the old town. I'm not even going to bother reading those out. They just generally go too quickly. Hmm. Seventh of February, nineteen twenty two. Driver, how far did he stop? The whole boat's there. I'll drop you if you don't swim. Why lock the gates? Cape's out wandering, looking for work. So when those boat like that interfering with our affairs, is the bus from Arkham always this empty? I and we preferred it that way. Not many come to it. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. It's good as the means to look after the road. So it's an unfriendly, unwelcoming town. And this guy seems a little touched. Well, okay. And they just kind of throw us on here. Off we go. So there is our driver. He uh, certainly doesn't look all that human. Could you direct me to the first national grocery store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh, well... You see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. Don't know who you're talking about, fella. Really? The First National's a large chain. You sure you haven't seen it? I'm sure. Stop bothering me with questions. Hmm. The First National's a large chain. Okay. You sure you haven't All right. You know what, guys? This seems like quite. <sighs> Quite the serious game to get into and quite a lot to try and cover in a roughly 40 to 60 minute video. But what I can say is I'm really, really liking what I see here. Um, this has been great. The atmosphere is on point. And man, the storytelling is extremely strong. I kind of just want to walk around and explore this place. Uh, and maybe I will. Maybe I'm going to add this one to the list of games that I want to cover this year. Um, this this has got quite an unsettling atmosphere to it as well, which I'm enjoying. And apparently the fact that, you know, it almost feels like one of those amnesia games, but there is combat with guns. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what this has to offer. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the game as well. So, as always, leave your thoughts and opinions down below. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.